Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Isaac. And this is your boy, Bryce. And we are Brothers on Tennis. Man, it is so awesome to be on here with you. Uh, been, been watching and uh, just couldn't wait, to, couldn't wait for Monday night to get here, man. Exactly. Wait, let me tell you what we did. We just finished recording our episode for the week where we talked about the results from last week. Um, and so, um, so we did that, but we left all of the hot topics for this session with you. So we're going to release this as a, okay. as a part two to our episode. Hey, Isaac. What up? Sorry for being uh, behind as usual. Oh, no worries. <laughs> what up, Bill? So, What's up? So for, for, so, okay. <laughs> So for our, our, our people that are joining us and, and coming on board, once again, we have social media coach extraordinaire, uh, also the coach of, it's, it's the what, University of South? University of Tennessee South, Southern. Tennessee Southern. Uh, their tennis yeah. program, uh, Bill Riddle. And, you know, we got an opportunity to meet him. Was that at World Team Tennis last year? I think. Yeah, we were Indian Wells World Team yeah, Tennis. Yeah, and after having watched him, you know, online, it was good to meet him. And the guy is just super, super solid. So we are so honored to have you join us tonight for our, our Instagram Live. Cool, man. This is going to be fun. Uh, I've missed you guys and looking forward to hopefully seeing you in Indian Wells this weekend. Yep. Uh, catch you guys out that way because I'm heading out there Saturday. So okay, we'll get there the night before you. So just let us know when you're in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just throw out some topics here, some hot topics from the our, this world of professional tennis and this last year. And I look, I just want you guys to take it away. And for the people that are online, if you've got comments or thoughts or, you know, get engaged in the conversation, please leave comments and um, uh, let's just have some fun with this. So Bill and Isaac, the very first thing that I want to talk to you about, and I'm going to look at my notes here, is at the tournament last week, we had an Acapulco Right. Our good friend Alexander Zarev had a little bit of a meltdown in his doubles match, and I it, it was kind of well shown across social media. Um, right. He he was um, he did it at the end of the match. Uh, what ended up happening mm-hmm. is they not only withdrew well he had lost in doubles, but they would withdrew him from the singles tournament. Um, they pulled back any money, prize money that he had won, uh, and they pulled back any points that he had earned um, from the tournament. And now there's currently talk that the ATP is in review of whether or not something more serious needs to be done. In addition, and there's been a lot of talk about a potential suspension. Did you guys see what happened and, and what were your thoughts? I think you, you, you and me. You take it, Bill. Come, come <laughs> on, man. So, so here's the deal, man. I'm, I'm a huge Vera fan. Uh, you know, he, he's the head guy. He's an Adidas guy. But, man, you can't be beaten up on the umpire's chair. I mean, I, I, I get it. You know, you get frustrated and, you know, a bad call or, you know, things just kind of add up. But, you know, man, you just can't go down that path. No, you're 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 nice, Bill. Yeah. See, I am not as very a fan. <laughs> Whatever. Well, it's it's early. It's early in the show. It's early in the show. We got to build. Build it up. <laughs> but see, we got to build up. See, Bryce oh. is throwing it out there, spicy uh, off the bat. Um, for me, I just thought it was. I just I I was taken aback, to be very honest with you. Um, I mean, right. not only was it, you know. The, just the physical nature of how he was hitting the chair, you know, uh, or at the umpire. But what you didn't see was there was a ball right. person that was right there, right kind of near where he was. 
the other guys on the net that were walking up, you saw he had to kind of step and get back to avoid yeah. getting getting chopped with the with the racket. And everybody knows, or at least most people should know, when you crack a racket, there's splinters that pop off everywhere and go every yeah. place. That in itself is dangerous. You could get those, you know, in your eye. There's all types of things that could have literally gone wrong there. And to me, it was just extremely yeah. irresponsible on his part. Um, I think a suspension should most definitely come down, in my opinion. And I and and the thing, and, and you explained the scenario very well. The part that really got me was the two times I saw the umpire, chair umpire, have to kind of move his feet mm-hmm. to try to make right. sure that he didn't get hit. See, it's one thing if he had, and I'm not saying that it even would have been right if he had done this, but if Sasha had come through and he was hitting like the bottom of the chair where the chair umpire never felt like any kind of physical threat, that's a different level. It's still wrong, but it's a different, different level. Right. When right. you were hitting right there where in the chair umpire's mind is, if I don't move my foot, he may hit me. This is going to hit me. At that point, you know, and I don't want to be all extra about it, but from an intent standpoint, that feels closer to assault Correct. to me, right? Correct. Because somebody is feeling like they are about to be uh, hit, assaulted, yeah. Yeah. Um, if they don't make a move right. or get out the way. I thought it was really ugly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, please. Well, Isaac, you, you made a good point right there. Is it, is it so tight right there? You got the net right there. You got players crossing over. It's a doubles match, ball kids, umpire chair, and the umpire. You don't have a lot of space right there to, to, to move, much less start swinging a racket. And, and you're right. It was r- literally right there at his, at his ankles, at, at his, uh, you know, close to the knee area. And finally, he has to kind of cut him out of the chair. Once he, you could tell he was a bit shocked mm-hmm. too. He was like, you know, what's up with this? Because he probably had never seen that before, mm-hmm. ever, or expected to see something like that. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, I think it took everybody by surprise. Uh, we've all seen players break rackets. We've not seen a player go that level. I mean, maybe now Bandian years ago at Wimbledon, uh, or it was a grass court event where he, he hit, the, uh, the... busted up that that up, yeah. yeah. That's the closest thing I can remember to, to something like this. So, yeah, I mean, you, you, it, it's a fine, it's a, it's a suspension, it's, man, you got, you, got to, you got to get it together. Right. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And, and I think, what was it, Pliskova actually had something happen to that effect where she actually hit the, <laughs> hit the chair, but it wasn't in, it wasn't like she was trying to hit the, the chair umpire. She hit the the actual, you know, right. the you remember, I, I think that was a couple of years back where she kind of dented the chair a little bit. But again, it yeah. wasn't like she was going at the actual umpire. So I just thought I just found it to be disgusting, quite honestly. Right. And, you know, I think we all, even though we didn't like what happened in the Djokovic situation at the U.S. Open, I think we all knew, like, that was not Djokovic's intent. No. His intent was not to pick up the ball and to, to right. hit that umpire. He was right. just, he, he was reckless, and that, and that right. was bad. Right. What I saw from Zerv, that was intent. Mm-hmm. He, he, he didn't, right. oh, I, I went to swing my racket, and I accidentally was hitting the uh, chair umpire's <laughs> chair three you or four, four times. times. Right, <laughs> exactly. And they go sit down, and they yeah. come back and do that. <laughs> right. So... <laughs> And this is coming from somebody where there's already a certain degree. I mean, isn't there already like an investigation about a potential domestic abuse uh, case? So if nothing else, and I'm not saying that one equals the other, but, you know, when people now are evaluating that and they're thinking about that and you're now starting to give multiple examples of where you haven't been able to manage your anger, uh, it, it's a shame for somebody who is so talented as they're to allow something like this to distract him from what he could potentially do in the game. Yeah, and I think somebody coming in there about a, a, being an accident, I mean, I think, you know, one swipe at, at the, the net post or the bottom of the chair is an accident or, you know, you let off a little bit of steam. 
But there was like four or five whacks at it, both sides. I mean, come he on. He came back. I mean, yeah, he came back. Again, he hit yeah, it yeah. three times, went to his chair, came back, and hit it again as the guy was walking down the step. So, I mean, it, it, it's just inexcusable, man. It's inexcusable. Right and, and, right. and he's not a kid either. I mean, Zverev is what, 24, 23, no. 24, 25 at this point? You know right. better. I, right. I mean, I, I saw yeah. what Paul was saying. He's been around. Like Shapovalov. Shapovalov was 17 years old when he fired the ball off. And again, he was being reckless. He just wasn't right. thinking. It hit the chair umpire in the eye. I remember that vividly. But again, uh -huh. that was not intent. What Zverev did was intent. He was trying right. to bring fear to that right. empire. And that's a, that is inexcusable right. in my eyes. So, Bill, do you, oh. my, my question for you guys: have, have you seen have you seen any kind of response from him? I haven't seen anything on on the news or the wire. Is there, what was his response? In, in a nutshell, he was he basically saying. Uh, you know, players are so passionate and I was just, you know, I was basically, you know, just f feeling my emotions and it would just, it just went over. And I, I was, just, I read it and I was just like that. No, no, right. I, it didn't fly for me. I'm sorry. I, it, <laughs> it just didn't. Yeah. Right. And, 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 you know, and he did apologize and everything and, and, and but, you know, it kind of feels, and I shouldn't, I don't know if I'm wrong for doing this or not, but sometimes when you read these statements that if a celebrity has been in an incident and it comes out like later that night or whatever, they look so PR related to me. It looked, it looked like the cookie cutter, uh, you know, apology you're supposed to give in the media to, you know, whatever. Right. Uh, right. And, <laughs> I, and I'm not saying that Zerv doesn't feel like, gosh, I really wish I hadn't done that. But um, yeah. You know, it didn't feel, I didn't feel like any extra, like, it wasn't like really heartfelt or whatever the way I was reading it. It felt like this was a publicity statement, you right. know, for me. Right. So, right. so Bill, right. the question I have for you is, do we know when we expect to hear something from the ATP? I mean, how long do they typically take to make a decision like this? <clears throat> you know, from what, from my experience, things have, have not necessarily cookie cutter. They'll take their time. They'll do their due diligence, you know, kind of, uh, you know, go through all the proper channels, you know, you know probably spend some time talking with him and the whole situation. I, I wouldn't think it's going to drag out too long because I mean, you've got Indian Wells coming up. You've got Miami coming up. You've got some major events coming up that if there's going to be a suspension, they're going to get in front of that now. Uh, so I would, I would bet you by this weekend, um, uh, we hear something just because of, What's on the on the the, the agenda coming up? Okay, here. okay. Right. I think they were even saying that it was sort of anticipated because didn't he decide to like play a Davis Cup match or something like that in a different different mm -hmm. place? So he's really not even because this is the whole you know the difference between I guess you know the tour and the ITF or whatever that you know the differences are. Right. But yeah. I'm just even surprised he's even playing this weekend that anybody would be allowed or he would even put himself out there to play because to me, he needs to go sit down someplace and really think about what he, what he's done. I mean, seriously, I mean, right. you, if you act out like, like the, that, the time out yeah, right. there, I'm sorry. You, you act like a little baby. You need right. to be, you need to be put in, in time out. Mm -hmm. And that to me is how exactly he acted. He acted like a little spoiled child. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, the ball was called out. This is tennis. It happens. That's why right. they have umpires. That's why they have uh, lines people. You, yeah, you may not agree right. with the with, with the call, but to again go to that extent, he was acting like a little baby. And, again, and you know what? Put, I, put him in timeout. And you know what else, Isaac? The thing that surprised me, it wasn't like this was the singles finals. This was the first round of doubles. Exactly. And. Yeah. And, and, and he hardly even played. <laughs> right. Come on, come on, bro. Right. Look, let's say you lose. You go have a drink on the beach. That, right. And you get ready for right. the next Bill. one. It, come it, on, Bill. It is what it is. Come on, Bill. You know right. what I mean? <laughs> it, it just doesn't make any sense. So, yeah. so that's why for me, I just, I, you know, I saw that and I was just like, you, you go on someplace, young man. I, I ain't got time for you. Right.
Um, but, and, and then let's not forget, and I'm glad at the net, uh, I, I think this is our boy, AJ, he's saying, yeah. yeah, there was the physical component, but we should not miss on the verbal piece. Yeah. I mean, there were several F-bombs <laughs> thrown at the umpire. And I, and I love the thing. I love the thing when people always say, and maybe it's not fair, but they say, like, had this been Serena or had this been Kyrgios, they would be calling somebody to bail them out of jail right now. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Locked up. Well, yeah, I, I, think, I think certain players, yeah, they're, they're, it's a different – I don't want to say standard, but there's just going to be a different reaction with some players versus others. And people will say, well, no, that doesn't happen. But yes, it does happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're right, Bill. You're right. So, so we will keep our eyes on this situation. This is going to be very interesting because if he, Bill, like you're saying, if he is suspended prior to Indian Wells, Indian Wells is a major tournament to miss. And depending upon how long the suspension is, that could extend yeah. – to Miami, uh, and right. look, if it's a six month suspension, now you're talking French Open, correct? And it yeah. should. I, 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 I just am a firm believer that it should. That to me was just uncalled for. And, and, and it to me, I think a six month suspension, I wouldn't see that as being too cruel, put it that way, right. or too strict personally. So Okay, so we're going to move off of Zara. We, we spent a good amount on him, and that was good. But we, <laughs> we mentioned somebody else in that conversation, and that person was uh, the former number one player in the world. I love saying that. Uh, Novak Djokovic. Now, Bill, Isaac and I were talking about this, and we hadn't heard. Is Novak playing Indian Wells? Uh, because he made some comment about, you know, currently he couldn't get – into the country, I guess, as an unvaccinated non-resident. Um, and he was hoping something was going to change. But have you heard anything? Is Novak not going to be at Indian Wells? Well, I'm not sure because, I mean, is COVID still a thing? Because, like, in some states, it's just dropped off the radar. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just yeah. being honest with you. Like, is it, still, is it still part of the, you know, part of what's going on in the world? But, yeah, I... I I think you're going to, you're going to see, he's going to want to play it for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, whether he gets in, I think it's probably got an easier chance of getting into the United States than he does probably in Australia, just because of the situation that they had been under for the last mm -hmm. two years. I mean, there was lockdown and then those, those people were in super secret lockdown. Right. Down there. So, uh, you know, and that was the thing is that everybody, cause I, I talked to a lot of my, my, my coaching buddies down there and some, some players and whatnot. And, and actually, one of our players on the team, uh, she went home for the holidays and came back. And we talked at length about that. And everybody down there was just so tired of being shut in and shut down that they were just rebelling against what it, what it looked like and what it stood for, for somebody on the outside to come in just to play a tennis tournament. So, What do you think, Isaac? Well, I, 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 I cut out a little bit there, my – Somehow or another, my, my audio went out. Um, but um, are we, this is just the Djokovic and playing piece? Yeah, whether he'll be playing, the, uh, playing Indian Wells or not. Well, you know, I, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying my best to kind of, kind of separate my, my, my personal feelings versus what, you know, um, what's right. Um, I, I mean, should he play? <sighs> um, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess, Bill, like you were saying, I think that this pandemic, it's still there. It's still happening. We're still dealing with it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, I, I still feel like if you're of the position that you don't want to be vaccinated, then there are, there are ramifications with that perspective and with that position. Um, so if he right. can't get in because of that, you know, so be it. I don't, I don't have a personal issue with him not being there to be very honest with you. If that's the position he wants to take right. and wants to make mm -hmm. and, and, and he's willing to kind of sacrifice the legacy or whatever 
for it, you know, do, 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 do you. Right, right. <laughs> do, do you. What you feel, yeah. Bryce? Where, where you at? You know, uh, um, so I'm, I'm very much like you, right? I, you have to separate kind of like my personal feelings from like just talking about it from a tennis standpoint. And from a tennis standpoint, you know, obviously he's a major name, one of the greatest players to ever play the game. And so you'd like to see him in the draw from that perspective. But, you know, I just worry about, um, you know, right now, while we're in this situation where people have different rules and different guidelines, you just really don't know. And, and I think all of this, though, is affecting potentially his playing because everybody thought, well, not everybody, yeah. but a lot of people thought when he played this week, like, okay, I didn't get a chance to play the Australian Open. I got all this pent up frustration. I'm going to come here and I'm going to just drive these people, right? Just drive everybody. Mm -hmm. And Yuri Vesely was like, no, sir. No. Thank you. Come again. Mm -hmm. You know, it, <laughs> it, it, you know, yeah. when, 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 when Djokovic says, you know, I, you know, I think I, there's a good chance I probably could have won the Australian Open if I played. I say, no, not if Yuri Vesely was there. You know, so it's, it's right. you know, so I think now, if you think about it, since the Olympics, yeah, with the exception of the year end championships, right? There have been a lot of kind of disappointments for him. The, the Olympics, the U.S. Open, not being able to play the Australian Open, you know, over here in, in, in Dubai and getting worked by Yuri Vesely, who clearly look like yeah <laughs> you know so um <laughs> so i even think if he that guy only has a few more points than i got so <laughs> i'm just saying exactly right right hey, you ain't basically been eating some chicken that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> right right and he, and he brought all of it to the table so he did. I mean, He's, that grease helped him apparently right so I don't even know if Djokovic plays if right now he's at the level to beat how some of the top guys are playing. Because I think there's a big mental thing going on right now with him. I'm trying to tell you. Well, one of the, one of the things is he, he's, he's missed that match play. That, that, that's something you just can't get from mm -hmm. practice. It's something that everybody else has been getting for the last three weeks to a month. Uh, match play, match play, match play. I, I will say this. He's on the entry list for Indian Wells, uh, as reported kind of by CNN and uh, from coming from my home studio here. But, but yeah, he, he's on the list, whether he plays or not, to be determined. Even if he does get in, how well is he going to do? Because we go back to the match play mm -hmm. situation. Correct. Correct. Now, speaking of, you know, these rankings, I mean, we now, we have history that was made, right? Medvedev is the new number one. Uh, first time in forever since it wasn't the big th or the big four, and uh, the the other news is as you talk, as I want to hear your thoughts on Medvedev as the new number one, something that was kind of a much smaller headline, of course, but you know Krychakova is the new number two on the women's side. So, Bill, wh what do you think about these changes in the rankings? Well, you know, and here's the thing. If you, if you look back over the past, you know, say five to 10 years, the, the first, you know, three months of the year is always just an alphabet soup. It's, it's, it's who, who's on, who's healthy, uh, who's been able to play matches. It is the, the most open it's ever going to be across the globe uh, because of those situations. Uh, depending on how you finished last year, depending on what kind of practice you got, you know, how, you know, where you were, your health, your sickness, those type of things, January, February, March, even into April, you know, I mean, it's, it can be tough. And that's where I think if you look back historically, you're going to find the biggest upsets, the biggest surprises come in these months right here because of those situations. Oh, right. And I, I love just basically real quick what Desi put right there. Desi, you better speak on it. Because again, mm -hmm. if, if if you're not vaccinated, you're basically are saying, hey, you know, I don't care about the the health of the the other uh, players or the fans. I mean, that's basically what that means in a sense. 
Yeah, uh, that yeah. comment was uh, Djokovic has said he would miss tournaments rather than be vaccinated. So if it is not super important to him, then why should fans be upset? No respect for health of players or right. fans. Uh, but yeah, uh, no, I, 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 I agree with you. Um, but, you know, Medvedev, you know, him becoming number one is really the result of having played a, la a strong last 52 weeks. Uh, and, you know, right. he's, he's consistently been the one uh, they're in the final mm -hmm. stages of these tournaments and getting the big wins. And you, you can't undervalue that win that he got over Djokovic at the U.S. Open. I think that completely validated right. that, that major win for him. And then once again, making mm -hmm. it, you know, to the finals of the Australian Open this year, uh, defending those finalist points to a T. Um, you know, and, and look, I like his <laughs> statements that he's come out with, too. He is not, he's looking forward to trying to hold this for years to come. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, I don't think uh, Daniil's going to be somebody that now he's reached this point and he's going to start relaxing. I think um, he's really going to start kind of zeroing in on trying to be uh, a long lasting champion. I tell you one thing, uh, he going to have a fight on his hands though, because uh, who is on one right now? is Rafael Nadal. Yep. And do not be surprised, right. people, if Rafael Nadal is not the number one player at the end of this year. Because yep. if he is doing this well right now, mm -hmm. on hard courts, and he yep. ain't right. even got to the, the surface that he loves and that he's right. going to be spanking folks up on, y'all yeah. just don't understand. Rafa's about to have a tremendous 2022. You no, know, right. it, it's going to be tough for Medvedev to to hold that number yeah. one. Mm -hmm. I really believe that Rafa is going to going to pull that from him sometime towards the end of the year. End I the really year. believe that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, remember, Rafa didn't play basically the second half of the year. I, exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, I think if you look at Medvedev as well, he he plays unafraid. He goes out there. Uh, it doesn't matter who's across the net from him. He's going to take that ugly forehand, and he's just going to keep coming at you with it, right? And 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 and, and he's not going to back away. He's not going to back down, and that's his style. And I think that is disruptive to some of the players out there because he doesn't shy away. He doesn't back down. He's just going to keep bringing it at you, and if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. And so that is something different for a lot of these players. Absolutely. I like that, Elisa. Have several seats. Don't just have a seat. Have several <laughs> seats. Right. So so the comment <laughs> was, folks better take that he is not a hardcore player mess and have several seats. <laughs> Go sit down. <laughs> and that's, that's dead right, because let's, let's be clear. You know, the Australian Open was the major that he had been the least successful. Correct. Um, and he was able to pull that. Um, he's winning on hard, you know. I mean, the guy was on crutches months ago. Right. Crutches. Amazing. Crutches. Yeah. It's amazing, man. It's amazing. So, yeah. But so here, here's, here's a piece of that, though, that I think sometimes gets overlooked. Yes, he was on crutches. Yes, he was kind of rehabbing. But that's also a bit of a mental and physical rest. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not out there grinding. Right. And so he, he probably has more in the tank. And the other piece of this is, whether it's a hard court or grass court, or, uh, uh, it doesn't matter, the court, he knows how to compete, but he also probably constructs points better than anybody out mm -hmm. there. He takes what you give him, and then he gives it back to you in right. space. Mm -hmm. He is coming at you. With with the geometry of the court, with the with the angles, with the spins, with the height, the depth, he brings it all to the table every single time. Absolutely agree. Uh -huh. Go ahead, B. Go ahead B. Well, I was going to. I, I like the question that our friend Paul put out there, which is he wants to know: Do we think that there's going to be a surprise major winner on the ATP side this year? Um, and I'm, I'm very interested. What do you guys, what do you guys think? Uh, you want me to, do you want me to sure. go first, Bill? Okay. Personally, yeah, yeah, yeah. for yeah, yeah. me, I actually feel like there is going to be a surprise at Wimbledon. Mm. 
And look out for a Berrettini or a Felix Auger Ali Asim. I don't think Djokovic will get it. I don't think Rafa will get it because he will be coming off of winning the French. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just don't think he's going to flip that and then get his game right for grass. I don't feel like some of the other guys are quite tight enough on grass, if I'm being honest with you. I mean, right. again, mm -hmm. Medvedev is not comfortable on grass. Rublev. I think if Tsitsipas could get his mind right, he could have a shot there. But uh -huh. in truth, I, like I said, the fact that both Felix and um, Berrettini uh -huh. made strong runs. Berrettini was in the final last year. Mm -hmm. um, I, I personally think that there is going to be a surprise winner at, Wim at Wimbledon. I do not think Djokovic will win Wimbledon this year. Oh, okay. Bill, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I'm not sure who it would be. I think there's a couple... I mean, Felix definitely is playing with more and more confidence uh -huh. as you as you watch him uh, uh, practice courts, uh, in the matches, in the interview room, those type of things. He just has an, an air of confidence around him, and that's what you know winning does for you. It it gives you that uh -huh. inner confidence. Um, I, don't count out Tommy Paul because I think there is something to be said for him making a resurgence here. Um, you, you never you never know. And I'm not. Give me that look. Don't, don't give me the side eye. Come on. I'm just saying. And I love Tommy Paul. You, you want me to go out on the list? Love, love Tommy Paul. Look, and we've interviewed yeah. him a couple of times. Yeah. And he's the, you know, we love him as a person. But th I, that just yeah. came out of, like, left field for me <laughs> to win a major. I'm, I'm trying to get Tommy Paul to win a 250. No, no, no. I, <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm, I'm the only Tommy Paul fan out here right now on this this limb by myself, but just watch out. I think I think there might be something there. Okay. I, I actually do think Tommy has a lot of talent. I really, really. Oh do. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I still feel yeah. like Bill. He, I feel like he might be a few years away, though, if I'm being honest with you. I still think he's got a lot more growth yeah. of his game that he needs to do. But the dude has the talent. I, I love Tommy Paul. Mm -hmm. Really do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and I I like Ooh. what a, what AJ just said. Look, mm -hmm. the way Car Carlos Alcaraz is playing right now, he to me could be a surprise winner. Maybe not at Wimbledon, uh, but at U.S. Open, right? Yeah, and and wait a minute, and don't and not that I think this is going to happen, but I'm gonna try to tell you, if Rafa somehow gets upset at the French Open by somebody. My list of people that can come behind him would be Djokovic, Alcaraz, and Cece Paz. Yeah. Those would be yeah. my, my three. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think Cece Paz definitely has the making. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he lacks the confidence sometimes to really play the game he wants mm -hmm. to play, um, the game that he can play. Um, and so I think, you know, once again, there's going to be some more match play, uh, he can get there. Um, but you know, what about Raleigh Opelka? I mean, I know I'm, I'm, I'm staring at the, the I get the side look again. I, I really only said that just so I can get, so I can get, I can get that look again, man. Come on. That's why you got me on the show tonight. Come on. Okay. <laughs> now, before Bryce goes in on that one, I will say this. <laughs> And I think because we talked about this a little bit on the last podcast, Bill, I'm with you. I actually think Riley has shown a level of growth in his game that he he can get to that next level. Because, again, you can't teach seven foot tennis. Yep. You can't teach that. And right. I feel like right. Riley, in my eyes, showed me a lot when he played Brooksby in that final and he began to adapt his game. Yep to be able to deal with the creativity that uh, Brooksby was bringing to that match. It, it was very impressive. And then right. he, again, he made it to the final the following week. Cam Norrie was like, I ain't having none of that. But still, for him to make right. consecutive finals, I thought it was very impressive. And I do think that there is a level that Riley can, can get to. I, I don't think it'll be this year, nor do I think it will be a Grand Slam. But I do think that he's got some. Right. He's got some. He's 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 got some there to build on. And Bryce, I hand it to you. No, no. <laughs> well, actually, you and I are not very different. I, I mean, I, he, you know, he give me he give me two two fifty tournament energy. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and maybe like if he really on it five hundred. 
Uh, I just find it hard to see him in a major best of five going against the best players in the world and coming out the top at the end of seven right. matches. Um, and I think it is even going to be challenging for the 1000 level series. Right. You know, Don't everybody, disagree. like everybody doesn't have like top five, top 10 potential, right? Some people, they careers is they going to be a good top 20 player. And yep. I, and that's just kind of what I see with Opelka because he has those weapons. He has a seven foot, he has to serve. Right. And especially if he's on a good day, he's going to be almost impossible to beat. But, you know, a lot about being successful on a tour is about consistency. And, uh, and maybe that's what you're right. talking about, Isaac. He, he made two tour finals in a row, so that's a good result. But I just, when I think about some of these other people we talk about on the tour, the Rublevs and Alcarezes and Berrettinis and FAAs and CC Pazes and Mavidev. I mean, like, he's behind There's all of them. There's a lot, yeah. Yeah, so he's behind dudes, all of them for me. Yeah, I heard you know? kind of, we got a good crop of dudes out there, guys. I mean, really, the top 15 is going to be popping over the next, uh, you know, right. few five, right. five to ten years here. Because like I said, even Paul said, we, we didn't even mention Casper Rude in regards right. to the French. Mm -hmm. And he, he's yeah. up in the mix. Right. We mm -hmm. even talked about Dominique Team. He's going to come back at some point. Right. And hell, like you said, Bryce, right. I, I, when right. you and I were talking the other day, hell, he was the, he was the one who was mm -hmm. pushing the big three. And we right. forgot all about him. And right. he ain't been gone before a minute. So right. there's a lot of guys out there, man. It's, it's going to be a good fight between all of them. Yeah, right. exactly. You got Karatsev, if he can get himself right. Karatsev, like Bryce and I were saying, he just need to go sit down somewhere for a minute. <laughs> just go sit down, friend. Stop playing so much. He, he's like, I can get in this tournament too? Yeah, okay, I'm playing. I'm playing, I'm playing. Yeah. He's like, sit down. <laughs> Well, okay, so what about this? If, if I'm going to go out on a limb for, for a major, I'm going to go Dimitrov because I think he's got game and he's got experience and he's got the, the right energy. It's just I think for him the stars have to align and it could be a situation where somebody goes out and he gets an open path to a semi or something like that. That's a dangerous guy that could win something out of nowhere. He definitely – Bill, look – Dimitrov is actually a very frustrating situation because you see the immense talent that he has. From what I understand, I've never met him before, but from what I understand, he is like the nicest guy in the world. Everybody absolutely loves the guy. Um, he's got model looks. I mean, you know, you want this guy to do well, but there's something like in the biggest matches there's there's done. like a hole in his soul like that he, he's missing something that is allowing him to break through kind of like that final pane of glass right yeah yeah and i don't know I, you know for the life of me i don't know what it is i i would love for that to happen but i don't know isaac what do you think he baby fed i mean come it, on. it could be it could be woman trouble <laughs> it could be woman trouble they, they they will mess you up <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, <laughs> they, they they will steal your soul and your forehand. You 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 saw you saw who was at, you saw who was at the uh, court side when he was playing last week, right? You ain't see that. I didn't see that. Oh, no, no. See, we don't want yeah, to get messy. Yeah. We don't want to get messy. We'll, we'll, we'll talk when we get to Indian yeah. rounds. We can talk. And we don't get yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we we won't put that on a, a, on record. <laughs> we, we talk about it off record. Okay. Yeah. I respect our queen. So That's anyway, right. um, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so let let me bring up something else. Now this yes. is a, 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 maybe a little bit of a of, of a more serious situation. So, <laughs> um, obviously, we are aware of what's going on with Russia and, and right. Belarus and and um, and uh, Ukraine. Yeah. So, Svetlana came out today and she made an announcement that um, unless the tours requested that the players from Belarus and from Russia play as neutral, like independents, like they did in the Olympics, mm -hmm. uh, that she would not play against a Russian or a Belarus, uh, Belarusian player. 
uh, and she felt that it was even potentially a dangerous scenario mm. to have that because if you think about it, you, you, you're in a crowd and you have the situation that's going on and then you have Ukraine fans and Russia. I mean, you know, so she, as of right now, I believe, has pulled out of the tournament this week because she was going to play Potapova, who is Russian. That's right. In the first round. Right. What do you guys think about the stance that she's just taken? Hey, I, for me, you know, it, 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 it I, I, you know, I can't, I can't help but say, you know, good on her for taking a stance and and having a position you know what i mean it's it's i can appreciate that because it's not it's not easy right now anytime your country you know countries are at war there there's a there's a there's a lot of sensitivity there and unfortunately you know that's you know that we are fortunate that tennis is a global sport but this is where it then becomes Uh a bit of a you know, a, a bit of a, a concern or an issue, but I, I, I respect her for, for that view. I respect her for her oh. position on it. And, and, you know, I think it's something that needs to be listened to and, and respected. I'll say that. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, I, I respect, I respect your views on that. It is, it is an incredibly tough time right now uh, for, for people who have family back there, uh, you know, you, you see every day something new coming out about what's going on and, and how it's impacting people's lives and their families, and it's global. And, and so, yeah, I mean, she's got to do what feels right to her. Um, and, you know, I think there's this huge bond with the players that are out there on mm-hmm. tour, but you're right. I mean, what happens to that person who's out there in the stands who's outside the stadium, those type of things. I mean, that's where it could get kind of sideways. And, you know, she's got to be looking out for herself and, and, and those around her. So right. Totally understand it. Uh, and I agree with both of you. It's, it's just a tough situation. It is a situation that is particularly tough for global sports. Uh, I, I, I uh, respect Svetlina for taking her stance. And, and initially when I was first reading it, I was like, Okay, Svetlina, I wasn't exactly sure I got it, but the more I read it, I was like, oh, okay. It wasn't that she, it was like, she yeah. didn't want to personally play against these people because she actually even called out saying, it's not the player's fault. It's not the player's fault. You really, like, we we right. saw Rublev, right. he even right. put on the screen, he wrote on the screen, no war, please. I mean, this right. is a Russian, you know, we've talked about Medvedev. Is Medvedev has made comments, comments about right. It, about not wanting to have this yeah. war. So you can't put it on the people. You can't put it right. on, you, you, just, you know what I mean? But I get where she's coming from. It's it's the other. It's the it's it's mm-hmm. you you know right. you have to you have to take all of that into context. So right. I, like I said, full respect to her, man. Full respect. Yeah. Well, it will be very interesting to see if I mean because it seems like politics and the tour they're having more and more situations. We have the you know the punk shui. Mm-hmm. situation With China. That yeah. they've yep. been asked to take a stance on that you now have this situation you know where they're being asked you know to take a stance you know on that um it's it's going to be interesting uh to see if the tours do anything or they choose to just completely stay uh hands off well i know didn't the atp say they were actually canceling a couple of events that were in mm-hmm. russia yeah yep. so so I do think that, you know, at least they've made, uh, taken a, a little bit of a position. I don't know that the WTA right. has, though. And who knows, maybe that's why Svitolina is coming out. Because, again, you know, she married and she married to Gael, so she knows what's happening on the ATP side. So she's like, hey, WTA, why, yeah. why aren't y'all stepping up? So right. that could be another reason why she's out there, you know, trying to, trying to, trying to kind of push, push, push the conversation. Well, I mean, probably as we get further and further down this path, I mean, you're, you're seeing canceled flights, right. you know, uh, sanctions, all these different things, tournaments being pulled out. I mean, it, it's it's going to get to the point where WTA will, will have to step in at some uh-huh. point and, and say something. It's just what what is that timing? Uh, because if this continues to go on and, and it continues to be as bad as it is for, for the people there, then then you'll see just more and more of this, this lockdown, uh, keeping, keeping away from Russia. Right, right. 
Um, so here's, here's a topic that's on a much lighter note. Um, shout out to Will Smith for now. Not only has he gotten a Golden Globe, globe for his portrayal of uh, Richard Williams and King Richard, but this weekend he won the NAACP Image Award for Best Actor, and he won the SAG Award for for best actor yeah. um what i particularly love about this because who doesn't love will smith and he makes great movies and he's such a lovable not only character actor but also seems to be a lovable person but what i also love about this is i think this is giving more attention to the sport of tennis yes. and i've i know i've known several people who have gone to see king richard not necessarily tennis fans but uh, were fans of either Will Smith or, you know, going to see a good movie about family. And now they're coming out of the movie wanting to know more about tennis and more That's about right. the Williams sisters and more about, right. you know, this stuff. What do you guys think about the really the impact that this movie is having on our sport? Well, I, 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 you have to love Will Smith. I mean, the guy, I mean, he he he's funny. He he in the in the movies where he's serious, he he does a great job there. It's hard not to like this guy. And then you mix it in the tennis component. Uh, I haven't seen the movie yet because I haven't had the time to sit down for that. Period. I know I I, I I was gonna do it on a flight and then the, the internet went out, man. So just just take a breath. <laughs> take a breath. Uh, <laughs> I don't want you to pass out. Come on. Uh, but, but, uh, I mean, yes, if, if, if anything that he does, especially a tennis movie is going to bring tennis to the forefront, people are going to be oh. just inquisitive about, Hey, tell me, I want to learn more about it. I want to learn more about the Williams sisters. I want to learn more about Richard Williams, the situation, you know, just tennis in general. I think we win as a sport whenever we can be in the mainstream, whenever we can get, uh, people like Will Smith. To, to portray parts of, of the tennis world, I think we always win. Absolutely. I, I mean, it, it's just, there's, there's so many positives uh, with this movie and with, with, with what's going on. Like you said, the exposure to those who are not uh, aware of tennis or didn't quite understand the Venus, Serena, more so Venus and Richard story, you know, I uh -huh. think you get a lot of people that see that and, Again, and, and like I said, Bill, you'll see this when you when you see the film. It's about family. It's about there are so many lessons yeah. in that movie. I, I can't like I said, I've seen it a couple of times. It just it touched me. It touched my spirit, to be very honest uh -huh. with you. Um, yeah. It's it's just a great <laughs> it's a great movie. So I, 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 I get chills even thinking about just a lot of the the, the life lessons that are kind of interwoven into that movie and into that script. And again, it's bringing people who don't know tennis into that world and hopefully getting them more curious about the sport so that hopefully they put a racket in one of their, you know, child's or, or relative's yeah. hand to go out and play. Because uh -huh. we know this sport is great. We know that this sport can be played by, you know, a two-year-old to a 92-year-old. I mean, it's so much that you know what I mean? It's just it's so great to try and bring more people in. So I, I just think it's fantastic, and I, I really love how far the movie is is really pushing the boundaries. Um, how about you, Bryce? Uh, the thing that I like, and maybe this is uh, directed a little more towards people that were somewhat familiar with the Williams family story. I like that, although it's about Richard and King Richard. I love the shine that Orsine got in the movie. Yes. Uh, I, I like that people got to see she was out there on the court. She had her court. Richard had his court. She's just not been this lady sitting in the box all the time with the big glasses, you know, uh, watching these matches. She put in the work. One of the most important right. lines in that whole movie to me is when she says she was the one who fixed Serena's serve Thank that you. Richard broke. And so if yes. anybody knows anything about Serena, I mean, she's held as being the woman with the best serve in the history of the game. Thank you. And so for Aura seemed to be the one that fixed it, 
then she is potentially, you know, the person that orchestrated, helped orchestrate the best women serve in the history of the game. Yep. So, and like we always say, Anjanu uh, Ellis just portrayed Ooh. that role. She wore that role out so well. <laughs> um, it it just. Yeah, I, I I love the hype that it's getting, and I cannot wait for the Oscars because I think they're nominated for six Oscars, and I'll be very interested to see. Uh, I think, obviously, Will is looking good as a yes, good potential a, for Best yeah. Actor because he keeps right. winning everything. And also, <laughs> I think the screenwriter, Zach Balin, <laughs> uh, is is he's got a good shot because he's been nominated thus far for 11 nominations yeah. in the awards and, and the various award shows. So, Paul, I don't think they practice too many. Well, let's be honest. I mean, we, we haven't, sorry, <laughs> we, we haven't had that many, we haven't had that many good uh, movies with, with tennis as a theme yeah. or the main, uh, a main component. I mean, you go back to the Borg McEnroe movie, oh, Wimbledon, yeah. uh, with, yeah. Uh, what was that other match point where about the murder with, uh, you know, set in, in London? I mean, but other than that, I mean, you ain't, you don't really have anything. So this was nice that it was a positive, uplifting movie. Once again, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm going to get some time, maybe on the flight out yeah, there. Yeah, there you go. And before you, you go. see us, you, you have see seen that, that movie. movie. I, you got to see that movie, Bill. Yes. I'm downloading. I'm, I'm watching on the flight out to L.A. this weekend. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, another question we had that came across here from, once again, our friend Paul. He wanted to know, speaking of the Williams sisters, you know, do they even play the tennis anymore? Or is it... <laughs> <laughs> You know what, listen, you and I both commented on this as far as Serena go. When we see Serena, what is Serena doing? She is in a commercial. And she what? Getting them coins, getting them bags. I am <laughs> not mad at Serena. Serena, get your bags. Get them bags of cash. You do you. I don't, if, if, I don't mind not seeing you on the court if I know that you're making that money. Because, <laughs> right. again, Serena, she, we all know this. Early on, Serena really wasn't getting all the endorsements and everything that she really deserved to right. get. So right now, in this point of her career, man, get get them bags, get them, bags. <laughs> get them all, get them all. So, so, so when you see her in a commercial, what do you think? Hey, there's that tennis player in a commercial. Exactly. Yep. I mean, you can't you can't see her without thinking about right. tennis. So to your point earlier, we're winning. Tennis is mm -hmm. winning every time somebody, anybody, gets into the mainstream and it bring it uplifts That's the sport. Right. And you know what? Speaking of the the Williams sisters and their endorsements and all that kind of stuff, I just saw today, and I don't know if this is true or not, but it looked like it was true, where they said that <laughs> Venus Williams is new. She's the new global uh, ambassador of Lacoste. Ooh, I hadn't heard that. Yeah, which surprises me because, really? you know, of course she has her line, 11. Yeah, 11. She's always promoting that. And they, yeah, yeah, she was in Lacoste gear. And and I don't know what being the global ambassador means. I mean, but it, it definitely means getting in Lacoste gear. Um, so, you know, I, I, you know, I guess you can own your own own line and still endorse somebody else. I guess. Uh, why not? It's, it just means you get more money, more bags. <laughs> yeah, more money, more problems. <laughs> right. I'm just saying. <laughs> exactly. Because uh, didn't um, Venus outfit the Olympic uh, teams? In this well, she Olympics? did the Olympic Village that the year. Village, her, the village. Yeah, her in her interior d okay. uh, design company. Yeah. So yeah. Venus yeah, they, getting in bags too. Shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's not forget. We just went over last week the top ten paid women in sports globally. Number one was Osaka. Number two was Serena. Number three was Venus. Mm -hmm. And that definitely isn't the WTA rankings. No. <laughs> you know. No. And number four was, four was Simone Biles. Yeah. You know. And five was Mugu, right? 
Um, yeah, I think it was Mugu, and then I think number seven or eight was Ash Barty. Was Barty. Yeah. Half of the top ten were were With women tennis, tennis players. players. Yeah, gotta love that man. Yeah. So, Bill, I know we've kind of dominated running the topics. Is there something that you want to bring up and you want to talk about uh, tonight? Man, well, I mean, a couple of things that are out there that, uh, you know, coming up. um, One, college tennis, because it's near and dear to Mm -hmm. my heart. uh, I live it every day. Uh, One of the things that I think that we've got to do – more is promote college tennis at all the levels. Because here's what happens. We talk about the top schools, you know, the Texas, the Georgia, Notre Dame, those schools right there, UNC. But there's so much good tennis right below that and even a couple of levels down that people just aren't aware of that is right there in your neighborhood, right there in your community. And if you really want to help tennis grow, go out there and support these, these local college players and these college programs. Right. And That's well a said, good shout out. That's a gr- really great shout out. Yeah. Cause you're right. I mean, college tennis is awesome. Y'all. I know mm-hmm. I have been to some matches and you just get me sucked in because they are right. so into it. And just the energy that each of the teams are showing for their players and, and what's going on, it really is a great atmosphere. Love college tennis. Right. And I just want to throw out a shout-out based upon that. You know, look, listeners, don't forget, we're doing the Spotlight Series. And our Spotlight Series is on Maxie Duncan, who is playing the number one spot at Harvard as a freshman. So you can follow her whole journey uh, through us. Uh, in terms of what she does on the Harvard team and, and the tournaments she plays outside of Harvard. Uh, so absolutely, we want to keep connected to the collegiate game. Mm-hmm. Well, even more so nowadays, you've seen more and more players come out of the college ring mm-hmm. and make it to the pros. So, so a, a kid that you may be watching, you know, right now at, at a school like Middle Tennessee State, you know, mm-hmm. who – just won the blue gray tournament down in, in, in Alabama. You may see that one of those players in three to five years playing in Cincinnati, playing at Indian wow. Wells, playing at some of these other tournaments, Dallas, wherever it may be, Atlanta, and, and getting some, some notoriety because this is where they, they're coming from more and more nowadays than maybe the well, years Bill, ago. Let's not forget the fact that the highest ranked female American player right uh-huh. now is a was a college player and that is danielle collins yeah two-time champion yeah. come on now come on yeah. now there's good yeah. tennis happening on the college in the college ranks for certain now i want to ask both yeah. of you this question that came across from our girl Linnell. uh she said what do you guys think about the tennis channel airing pickleball over college tennis <laughs> come on bill <laughs> oh my goodness oh where, where where do i begin um uh, okay full disclosure i was the guy five years ago that was waving the flag to to do away with pickleball <laughs> I, I was the number one guy in line that hated pickleball and then i realized something that just me hating pickleball wasn't going to stop mm-hmm. it it was right too right, big. right. And, and, and the reality is, you know what, if people are watching Pickleball on the tennis channel, once again, it's on the tennis right. channel, right? It, there, there ain't no Pickleball channel <laughs> yet. <laughs> so, so maybe we're going to see something come out of this. Now, you know, the reality is the, the tennis industry has changed, and, and this is something that I see on a daily basis. Tennis professionals at the clubs are now more racket professionals. Right. You're not going to see a tennis director anymore. You're going to see a racket mm-hmm. director or a director of racket sports. You're going to see more and more things kind of coming along, whether it be padel, whether it be badminton, whether it be pop tennis, pickleball, all these different things. The reality is in the last two years it's changed because we were at home. You're able to do these things. Pickleball took off. Mm-hmm. Pickleball took off, I, I feel like, because of the pandemic. Right. Right. And you could play it in your in your back in your driveway, mm-hmm. right? And people did. And you know what? If you look at the players out there, 
uh, Ben Johns, Colin Johns. I mean, there was a, one of the guys in the finals of the doubles yesterday played tennis at Texas. So you're seeing these tennis players who couldn't necessarily maybe make it or didn't have the right opportunity to make it on the tennis scene. They're converting over and they're playing pickleball and they're dominating mm-hmm. because they play a tennis game on the pickleball right. court. And that's, that's different than it was five years mm-hmm. ago. It is, it is become closer and closer. Do I like the sound of that pickleball? No. <laughs> Do I wish they were playing tennis? Yes. But I've learned to appreciate it because it is at least putting people out there doing something active. And you know what? Kudos. Tennis Channel, keep running it because, look, we need Tennis Channel to survive. Right. We need you to survive. So if you got to show pickleball, show pickleball. I like that perspective. I really do. Really good perspective. I'm I'm right there with you, Bill. I, I, I do feel, though, that they should try to fight to put college tennis on a bit more. It seems uh-huh. like they were trying to uh, in recent years, and I really hope that they continue yeah. with that because I love the fact when they show college tennis on the Tennis Channel. I watch right. it personally, and oh, I would yeah. encourage everybody out there to yeah. watch it as well. It's really good. It's good right. tennis, folks. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, as far as yeah. them putting pickleball over college tennis, I'm not necessarily a big fan of that. But like you said, Bill, and I think you you said it so eloquently, there's a place for it. It's a growing sport. It's bringing uh, attention to racket sports as a whole, mm-hmm. which is a positive thing. Right, right. Well, guys, this has been so great. We are coming here to the very end of our time, and I don't want us to get cut off. But, Bill, thank you so much. Do do you know that you are our first guest on Instagram Live? Uh, Very first. What? First. (laughs) That's never been said before. I've never been first for anything other than the buffet line, right? (laughs) Well, you are the first for us with this, and we are so thankful uh, that you were there. And we're very excited. We'll see you in a couple of days, man. See you in a sec. That's right. I will see you guys on, on the West Coast. Thank you so much for letting me come on here with you. It's been a blast. And, man, I, I just love what you guys are doing. Love you guys to death and, and can't wait to see you. Same here. Absolutely. So, Isaac, any final words from you before we uh, log off? Hey, folks, get your merch. You see my camo hat? It's, it's <laughs> pimp. I'm trying to tell you we got merch. It looks good. Look, well, look at my whole biscuit shirt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go to the website, go to the shop page. Come on, y'all. We got the sale. It's the sale is still happening for February. Get out there and get your merch. Just saying. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, Bill. And listeners, we will not be here next Monday. Right. Because we'll be at Indian Wells. But we'll Correct. be shooting out a whole bunch of content from Indian Wells. You're going to get tired of us, so, you know, you won't miss us at all. So, <laughs> everyone, have a good night, and we talk to you soon. Bill, safe travels. We'll see you soon. Awesome. Thank you, guys. See you soon. <laughs>